What's up everyone? In this video, I'll be showing you how I build my Phuket. Out of all the quads that I have, this is easily my favorite frame to fly. Being so small, light, and agile, it's an absolute blast to fly. It usually just bounces off stuff and keeps going. So the Phuket is a 140 millimeter slight stretch X frame that's designed to take a beating and keep going. Um, I hate breaking parts, so I tend to put a lot of emphasis on protection when I design frames. So the Phuket uses a, a, a um, three and a half millimeter carbon fiber plate that's rotated 45 degrees. So the carbon fibers run down the lengths of the arm, giving it maximum strength. Um, 3.5 millimeters might be a little overkill for a light three inch frame, but there really, there really wasn't that much of a difference in weight between three millimeter and three and a half millimeter but there's a big difference in strength. So I went with a three and a half. So the Phuket is designed to be used with a single stack all in one. Um, it can use a double stack with say a four in one and a flight controller, but you'll just have to use um, 20, mil 20 millimeter um, standoffs um, instead of the 10 that comes with the Phuket. So you can see here, I've got a ESC with flight control and it's a double stack and I just had to use um, slightly longer um, standoffs to raise a canopy to give room for the stack. But um, so in this build, I will be using the Cicada 30 amp all in one with an F4 processor, uh, built in five volt, got a current sensor and built in uh, Betaflight OSD. So with the OSD, you can tune PIDs right from your Tyrannus and you can configure what you want to display on the in your OSD um, through Betaflight. And for the motors, I will be using the T-Motor um, 1408 F22 3750kV motors. Uh, these are really great motors with tons of power for uh, 3 inch or even light 4 inch quads. And for the camera, I will be using a Foxier Aero Micro 2. Um, but I won't be using any of the built-in OSD functions because I'll be using the, the Betaflight OSD built into the Cicada 30 amp. Um, I really prefer the Aero Micro over the Swift Micro because it's much more durable than the Swift. Um, the reason for that is because, I don't know if you can see, but the Swift tends to put a lot of big components on the bottom um, bottom of this, the camera right here. So it's easy to knock components off. Say when um, you hit something, all, they have a lot of big components on the bottom right here that are sticking up and when you hit something it knocks those off and it just kills the camera. But um, as you can see on the on the Fox here there's only really one component right here that's sticking up. So these are a lot more durable um, that I found than the Swift. And for the VTX I'll just be using a, a TBS Unify Race. Um, you could use pretty much any small VTX here. Um, there is a smaller Unify, the 5 volt one, but that one's around 50 bucks and this one is about 30. Um, I use these race uh, VTX in all my quads and they've been very reliable. So the Phuket can fit any um, SMA antenna, but I highly recommend these Lumineer stubby antennas. I freaking love these antennas. I've been using this one for about uh, two two months and I really can't tell the difference between in the video signal between these little stubby ones and the full-size um, axes or even the Triumph. They're so small and compact they, they're they always out of the way and they're so easy to remove. You just twist it off like this and that's it. You don't have to hold anything, use any nuts or I mean um, tools to tighten your antenna and they just sit really small low profile and they've been really tough too. And then for the receiver, I'll just be using the XM Plus. This is a full range diversity um, receiver in a tiny little package. Diversity just means there's two antennas 
Um, this gives you much more reliable signal and distance versus the XM, which only has one antenna. The XM is smaller, but um, I had one in my other quad and it always went out on me. But since I started using these, these have been just as reliable as the bigger XSR, except the difference between the XSR and the XM Plus is that the XM Plus doesn't have telemetry. So building the Phuket is really easy. There's just a couple things that you need to watch out for when you're building this frame. Um, because we're using the Cicada 30, 30 amp all in one, the USB is on the bottom of the frame here that sticks out the back. So the board is gonna sit like this on the frame. Um, because the USB is on the bottom, you don't want the USB touching the carbon because the um, there is a polarity on this on this um, USB. So, so what I do is just get a piece of um, masking tape, cut a little piece off, and then just put a piece of tape on the back of the frame where that USB would sit. Just like that. And then it'll protect the USB. It'll prevent the USB from touching the carbon. So, um, so I'm just gonna go ahead and remove this um, wrapping off the ESC. Right here, and then I'll just put the screws in on the bottom. And instead of using um, standoffs, I'm using these 12 millimeter flathead screws that'll go all the way through the the flight controller and then I'm just going to use these butter mounts that I have for for the Tokyos to give the flight controller a little bit of dampening so we don't have any vibration issues reaching the flight controller and then when you have that just make sure you have the USB pointing down Sometimes the holes on this um, 30 amp is a little bit um, smaller than the regular. So if that happens, just screw it in. All right, so I've got the all-in-one mounted on the frame. And by the way, you don't want to screw the screws all the way down because you want to leave a little gap in between the all-in-one and the frame because that's where the battery strap will go. Oh, and by the way, this is a ES20 gyroscopic screwdriver. Uh, this thing has a rechargeable battery that you just plug into a regular USB. And um, this thing is really cool because when you push a button, it'll turn, the, the motor will start spinning the way that you tilt the screwdriver. So if you tilt it to the right, it tightens. And then depending on how much you tilt, it'll speed up or slow down. It's really cool. I've been using this for the past few months and I uh, really like it. I'll put a link in the description below if you're interested in the screwdriver. All right, so I'll just show you how to mount one motor and then you can figure out the rest. Um, first, I'm just gonna use my little cheat sheet again here. I made one for the Phuket, which will be available in a kit. So I'm just gonna cut the motor wires according to this length. All right, so um, I'm just gonna go ahead and pretend so one thing to watch out for when you're mounting these motors onto the frame is that the screws that it comes with, some of them are a little bit longer than others. So when you're screwing on the, um, the screws onto the frame, you just gotta watch out for, uh, make sure that none of the motor wire or the motor screws are touching the windings. So I'm just gonna pretend these really quick. So when you mount the screws, you can kind of see on the bottom um, if one is too long and touching the windings. If it is, just take it out and get a file or something and then um, just file off like half millimeter or a millimeter or something just to be sure that none of the screws are touching the windings. Because this is a three and a half millimeter frame, it's a little bit awkward. 
So I'll just go ahead and solder one up. So this is what it should look like once you have your motors mounted. Next we'll just install the battery cable onto the, uh, the all-in-one. The ground is always a little bit harder to do because there's a lot more copper that goes throughout the, the whole board so you just got to heat it up a little bit more but the trick to this is to add a lot of your own solder once you have that done you can just place this in and make sure you pre-tin your battery cable before you try to do this So next we'll install the FPV part onto the Phuket. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to prepare the, the cable for the camera and the VTX. So first we're just going to use the cable that came with the camera. Alright, so this is what you're going to do on this untie it first so you want to use the end with this little black and white cable on there so just untwist all this stuff you can go ahead and cut this part off you're not going to need it all right so what we're going to do is remove this blue wire because this is the v-send wire this is for if you're going to use the, the built-in OSD, but we're not because we're using the Betaflight OSD. So take out the blue wire. And I'm just going to use my little cheat sheet here to cut the length for my camera wires. If you don't have this cheat sheet, you're just going to measure out enough wire to where the board can mount on or the wire can mount on the board and um, have enough slack for you to remove your canopy you're going to save these wires later because you're going to use these for the uh, rx so go ahead and splice and tin these and then this is the harness that comes with the the unified uh, race so the, what we're going to do is we're going to remove every wire here except for the the video signal so we're going, we're going to remove the 5 volt um, out which is the red wire you're going to remove the white wire because that's the smart audio um, since we're using the XM plus we don't have um, telemetry to to do the LUA script so here we're just going to cut this black wire off. You can't remove it because it's connected to the, um, the power wire. So go ahead on this harness. You can just um, go ahead and clip it off over here or something. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and cut the length that I need. This is my video signal. And then I'll cut the VTX power. Right here. And then go ahead and splice and tin these wires. 
Okay, so once I have everything cut, um, I'll show. I'll just explain to you how I'm gonna hook it up first, and then I'll show you. So this is the harness for the Unified Pro. All I left was the video wire and the power uh, going into the VTX, and we're just gonna connect the power directly onto the battery right here, and then the video signal will go to video out on on the front of the all-in-one and then for the camera we're just gonna power the camera directly off the board and it's gonna go um, ground to ground 5 volt to 5 volt and then for the video you're gonna put it on video in so I'm just gonna pretend the pads that I need I'll go ahead and pretend the pads for the RX since I'm already doing it So this is video in, this is ground, video out, and the 5 volt. Oops. Alright, so I'll go ahead and do the video, the video camera wire. So 5 volt. These wires are tiny. Alright, so 5 volt is right here. This is how we're powering the camera. And then we need a ground. And then I got video in. Alright, and then this is the harness for the TBS um, TBS race. Alright, so we got the power there, and then we'll just connect the video the signal to the video out. I'm trying to do this upside down, kind of weird. So next we're just going to install the XM Plus onto the all-in-one. So I'm just going to use some of the scrap wire that I ended up with um, when I took it off the um, the camera harness. Um, I like the wire that the, the Fox ears come with now because it's nice and soft silicone. So just grab some of the soft um, soft wire and just cut the length you need for the RX. I'm just going to use my little cheat sheet here because I know how long I need. Cut that and then I'm going to pre-tin all these wires. So this is how you hook up the wires on the XM Plus. If you have the bind button facing up, the very et, um, very corner pin will be ground. So it goes ground, 5 volt, S bus. Alright, so this is what the XM Plus should look like once you have um, the wires connected on there. Um, I just put a little bit of uh, heat shrink around the XM Plus to make sure none of the metal touches the other parts on the board. Now we're just going to install it onto the board. So just a quick tip when you're mounting everything inside, you want to keep the front part of the board over somewhere around here as low as possible. And the reason for that is because the camera is going to sit somewhere right here on top. So if you have this part too high, it's going to be touching the bottom of the board on the camera. So when you hit things on the canopy, 
like this. If you hit things, it's going to smash the camera too far um, down. And then when that happens, it's going to hit all these little components on the bottom. But um, the canopy is printed um, pretty thick. So you shouldn't have an issue with that. But just to be safe, it's, it's better to keep this part of the board um, sitting low. So now we'll just mount the RX antennas on the bottom of the frame. So just kind of thread the antenna between these wires and then just put them under the frame. So this one's going to go kind of like that. And this one will go this way. All right. And then once you got them under, I'm just gonna I cut two little tubes of uh, antenna antenna tubes, and then just thread them over the antenna, and then just kind of place them right there. I'm just gonna hold it while I get a piece of tape, and then just kind of tape it. Make sure um, when you tape it, just grab tape a little piece of the antenna wire right there. So that way they don't slip out. I've been doing this on my other Phuket and it's been working great. I don't have to mess with any antenna wires or anything. And the reception has been really good actually. So once you get the antennas mounted, it should look something like this. So the antennas will sit under the frame inside these tubes. So there's really no chance of them getting hurt or anything and um, very little chance of them getting pulled out. Um, I've been running mine mine this way and I've had, I have about a hundred packs through these uh, uh, through this frame and I haven't had a single issue with the antennas. Alright so before we get into the beta flight part we're just gonna go ahead and bind up our XM Plus to our Tyrannus. Uh, for the sake of saving time in this video I'm not gonna go into the whole setup of the Tyrannus I'll make a um, I'll make the backup file for my Tyrannus available on, on my website. Um, it'll have all the switches and uh, telemetry, timers, everything set up already. But um, just a quick note, I have this this um, SD switch as my auxiliary one, which will be arm disarm, and then the SB switch will be my auxiliary two, and this is for setting up turtle mode. So before you bind the um, the the XM Plus to your Tyrannus, we're gonna have to plug in the battery. So either put on the antenna or unplug your VTX. You never want to plug in or power up a VTX without an antenna. So I'm just gonna put on the antenna. So to bind, just go into menu, page down, scroll up to bind. Hit bind. It'll start beeping. And then you're just going to push the little um, bind button on the RX while powering up the, the quad. You start, you'll see it blink a little bit and then you unplug and let go. Exit out. And then when you plug back in, the LED should be green. It's green and we're bound. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is flash our flight controller with the most current software, which is 3.2.1 right now. So in order to flash this all-in-one board, there's a little boot button on the board that needs to be pressed while you, while you plug in the, um, the USB. Normally, before I start building, I always flash the board. Uh, before I start soldering everything up just in case there's an issue with the board um, You won't have to build everything and then find out there's a there's a problem and then have to redo everything So if you're watching this video, I would do this part of the build before you start soldering everything onto the all-in-one so to put it in um, DFU mode you're gonna push the little button on the board while powering up while plugging in the USB. So when you plug it in, you should see the um, the board go into DFU right here. And then just go to firmware flasher. The target for this uh, Cicada 30 amp all in one is the Omnibus F4. And then we're just gonna go to 3.2.1. 
and then load online and then hit flash firmware all right once it's done flashing hit connect and then uh, we're skip ports right now we'll go to configurations for now we're gonna leave this at one shot and everything else the same because I'll show you why in a little bit and then um, I always turn this off turn off accelerometer I always turn off the accelerometer because um, if you have this turned on and you land upside down or something you're not gonna be able to rearm um, you need this off for turtle mode go here and then select uh, serial and then select S bus and come down and then for the features I just turn on OSD and uh, permanently enable air mode that should be it for this screen hit save and reboot go back and then for the ports we're just gonna set um, you are one for our serial RX. So that's for our um, XM Plus. Hit save and reboot. Connect. And then for here, just make sure everything's okay. And then for the PIDs, this is for the PIDs. This is my PIDs for uh, these components with um, the Gym Fan. 3052 props. So I'm just going to go ahead and enter these uh, values in real quick. Alright, so these are my PIDs for this setup. And then the rates you could kind of just play with. Um, I like to use a little bit of a lower rate because I find that it's easier to navigate around a racetrack. Um, I find that if the rates are too high, then it becomes too twitchy and then it's really hard to um, run around the track. And then always do like a 0.25 TPA. Save. And then go to the receiver tab. And then just change this to this one. Save. And then for the modes, um, we're going to set up auxiliary one in the high position. Or actually, yeah, I'll just go ahead and set this right now. And then beeper, I'll have it set to the same switch, but just on the low position. And then we'll come back later for the turtle mode. Because see right now, you don't see a flip over, whatever. That's because our... Um, well, in order to have turtle mode, you have to have your configurations. You have to be using uh, D-Shot. And your ESCs need to be flashed with 16.65, I believe. So for now, we'll just skip the, um, the turtle mode part and then go test the motors. So here, make sure you have the props off. And then we're just going to check the motor directions. Make sure everything's um, spinning up the correct way. So make sure you have um, an antenna plugged in or unplug your VTX. Actually, before we do that, we're going to calibrate it. So make sure your configurations, it's set at a one shot 125. Go to motors, check this, move this all the way up. Plug it in, and then before the time, chimes run out, move this all the way down. So the reason why we calibrate the ESCs is because even if you're running um, D-Shot, if you don't calibrate your ESCs, um, when we go into the BL Heli later, you'll see the min throttle and max throttle values are incorrect. Um, if you don't calibrate, it'll be something like 800 to 2000. But after you after you calibrate the ESCs, you'll see the min throttle at like 1000 something and max is 2000. So once we have it calibrated, now we can go here and set it to D-Shot. I usually set this to like 2.5. Save and reboot. And go back to... And then we'll go back to the motors tab. And then here we're just going to spin up each individual motor. And make sure the channels are corresponding to this diagram right here. So motor 1 is this bottom one right here. 
and it should be spinning um, clockwise, which it is. And then motor two is this one. It should be spinning counterclockwise, but I, it, it feels like it's going uh, clockwise right now. So I'm just going to make a mental note of it. Number two needs to be reversed. Three should be counterclockwise. And it's not, it's spinning clockwise. So two and three need to be reversed. And then four should be clockwise. And it is. So um, I verified that each motor is spinning in the correct um, signals, one, two, three, four, but two and three need to be reversed. Yeah, two and three, right? Yeah, so motors two and three will need to be reversed. So um, we'll go ahead and, oops, what is this? Okay, I guess I get lunch. <laughs> okay, we'll go ahead and flash our ESCs. So we're gonna get out of that and then just go to our BL Heli configurator. And connect. And then hit read setup. And then first we're just gonna flash our ESCs. You can leave the ESC at whatever it's set. And then for the version, set select this one 6.63 dshock commands official and then um, hit flash All right, so once it's flashing, we're just gonna go ahead and reverse our motors two and three. Over here. Reverse, and then hit right setup. And then disconnect. Close this out, go, in, go back into beta flight. And then connect. And then when you go into the mode, you'll see that this, you'll see this extra mode right here. This is the turtle mode. So you go set it to an auxiliary switch. I'm setting it up to my switch right here. I'll show you how it works in a little bit. And I'm gonna set this to the, the high position. Hit save. And then we're gonna go back to the motors and just check that everything is correct. So here, motor two is now counterclockwise, and then three should be counterclockwise. And it is correct. If you go back to receiver, turn on your transmitter. Gentlemen, welcome to flight time. Zero volt engine off. I've hit arm. Engine. Motor should spin up. Turn it off. Engine. So the way uh, turtle mode works, is they when you fly, um, once you crash uh, land upside down or something, you enable term, turtle mode with the switch that you used. But then when you hit arm, nothing will happen. If you hit throttle, nothing happens. But, so you use your right stick to turn the motors. That's turtle mode. All right, so. Um, this is all set, motors, and then we'll just go to, to the OSD. So, uh, Betaflight OSD, first I'm just going to disable all of these because this is way too much stuff to have on the screen. I wish they would, um, by default, have these unchecked. So you can play with these settings and um, just configure the screen to however you want. I only have three things set. This is a uh, current draw. This tells me how much my, um, my motors are currently drawing. This is my battery voltage and this is my flight time. And then um, you can turn all this other stuff off. This is just tells you your uh, stati statistics when you disarm your quad. Um, I don't have RSSI. I'm not using black box. That's it. Hit save. And then we're pretty much done with the beta flight part.
Okay, so before we mount the canopy, we're going to go ahead and turn off the OSD in the Foxier camera because we'll be using the beta flight. So go ahead and plug up your camera and then plug in this little directional thing that came with the camera into this right here. And then this is what you should see in the... Um, we're going to go ahead and put on the the lens cap I'm trying to do this blind I'm looking through my goggles so it's kind of weird all right and then on here to turn to get into the main menu just push the uh, center button and then I'm gonna turn this um, night day into color only if you have it on auto um, if you're flying at nighttime and there's not enough light your camera go will go into black and white mode so I always leave it in color exit out of this and then to get into the OSD menu push up and then the middle button and hold it down and then you'll come up with all this stuff and then we're just going to turn off these things exit whoops we're going to turn off the power turn that off exit yeah, so we want a nice clean screen for our uh, Betaflight OSD and then if I take the lens cap off, that's what it looks like. So now we can mount the canopy onto the frame. So the Phuket uses th uh, three 10 millimeter uh, hex standoffs that go into the inside of the frame here. So just kind of shove them in here. And then once you get them in, just use a use the um, little M three by five screw, and then just screw them in through the top. And this will keep the standoffs from coming out. And you want to make sure you put this the standoffs into the canopy before you put the camera in, because once you put the camera in, it's really hard to access this front this front screw hole. So this is how the canopy is mounted onto the frame. Alright, so next we'll just uh, mount the camera inside the canopy. So just put this in there. And I'll just use the uh, included screws that came with the, the, the camera. So once you got the screw um, tightened, the camera should be pretty firm. And as you can see, the, the hole is slotted here with this little cutout. So you can really um, adjust the camera angle from about, let's say about 20 to 30 degrees, all the way up to, um, this looks like about 75 to 80 degrees. So I usually like to fly around. 50 or something like that so if you if you need um, a reference point this camera um, the front of this this plate right here is 40 degrees the tilt all right so once you get that just go ahead and plug in your camera from the inside and then the antenna will go into the slot in the back and you'll see there's a cutout I don't know if you can see from there, but there's a little cutout for the um, this metal part that keeps the antenna from spinning when you have it um, put in there. So it's going to go on just like that. And then use the uh, included um, M3 by 6 flathead screws to secure the canopy on the frame. Alright, so this is what the quad should look like once you're done building. Um, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put on these little arm guards that I made that slip onto the ends of the arms over here like this and then the little holes will just go over the motor screws this just kind of protects the frame from uh, damage for if you're like flying on concrete or anything and then um, I'll put the rest of the arm guards on later 
And then the last thing we'll do is just screw on our antenna. I'm using these um, Lumineer Axi stubs, which I love. All right, so this is the quad right here. Um, built up with this weight. Let's see how much it weighs. The weight is about 158, somewhere in there. Um, all right, so I'm gonna meet up with Ivan to get some flight footage at the park, but um, that's pretty much it with the build. Um, I hope you enjoyed this bit video, and uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments below, or go to my website. There'll be a lot more um, information on how to build this, the full schematic, uh, build kits, and ready to fly um, Phuket's will be available. So thanks for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe.